Okay, so nobody's really talking about this, and I might be ruffling some feathers by dressing it, but if you're into the non-alcoholic movement, into mocktail making, grab a seat, because there are a few things that need to be brought to light, and what I'm about to share is crucial not only for your health, but also really our collective evolution, because as we take this giant step forward in reevaluating not only our relationship with alcohol, but also all things we consume, whether it's food or media or the thoughts that we allow in our heads. I want to start off by obviously saying that I'm really enthusiastic about this movement and I'm so glad to be a part of it and it's truly inspiring to see how mocktails have become popular among so many people and removing the shame that was previously associated with people who weren't drinking. Now we're witnessing the emergence of non-alcoholic spirits, zero-proof margaritas, and functional beverages in pretty much every color and flavor you can imagine. And while consuming less alcohol is obviously a positive trend, there are aspects where we are absolutely missing the mark. So this is what I want to really explain. So personally, I have two decades of experience in hospitality, a background in clinical herbalism, and a degree in marketing with my expertise really lying in the health, food, and personal care sector. I have a really deep understanding of health trends and can discern when we're being swayed by clever marketing strategies. I've also sort of perfected the art of examining labels to pinpoint harmful ingredients to stay away from it. And in this video, I really want to concentrate on non-alcoholic spirits specifically. So many of them contain excessive sugar, preservatives, and natural flavors which may contribute to health issues from ADHD in children to allergies, liver damage even, and more. And basically what happens is companies resort to these additives, first of all, because it's cheap. Secondly, because infusing flavors like juniper or cinnamon to make non-alcoholic gins and fireball knockoffs, I don't even know if people drink that anymore, but Basically, it becomes exceedingly challenging to extract without alcohol. Other companies just opt for fewer artificial colors and additives, but they focus instead on developing these proprietary technologies to infuse flavors into water that would typically be extracted in alcohol. So let me read to you the label for a non-alcoholic spirit brand and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And this product is supposed to be an aperitif. So the ingredients include water, sugar, non-alcoholic fermented grape juice, concentrate, natural flavorings, color E124, color E122, acidity regulator, citric acid, preservative, potassium sorbate, cellulose gum E466, and then it says star star, dairy free, vegan, nut free, egg free, and gluten free. So do you kind of see what I'm talking about here? Like can you grasp why we're overlooking the core issue with the mocktail industry? Like, do you see the internal conflict and the marketing strategies aimed at really influencing you? Like hardly any of those ingredients occur naturally and the rest are chemicals. And natural flavors, by the way, is a really vague term that can encompass pretty much anything. And nearly every natural flavoring is synthesized from chemicals derived from fossil fuels even organic flavoring. It's allowed to have 5% synthetics in it by law. And so no, I can't confirm the intentions of this brand, but it seems like they're also using deceptive marketing tactics by emphasizing the allergens that they're free from. There's significant consumer confusion around allergy-free labeling. And for some, including all of that at the end of the ingredients list could really suggest they're trying to promote health, despite this product really lacking in nutritional value completely. We're all captivated by this mocktail trend, but we're failing to pause and recognize the reality. Companies are leveraging buzzwords like non-alcoholic and zero proof to indicate a beverage that won't result in the hangover because the aftermath of a hangover is making you feel like you're sick, which is obviously associated with poor health. But then they undermine this zero proof message by including really low quality ingredients that contain a ton of chemicals and have side effects. And unfortunately, government oversight really fails to safeguard the health of Americans and allows drink companies to exploit us and include carcinogenic ingredients in their products perpetuating this cycle of capitalism that we just really need to stop falling for. Now, I have to acknowledge that this is not true for every brand, but it's extremely common for the non-alcoholic spirits specifically, like gins and rums and knockoff tequilas. The functional mocktails are an entirely different story, and I'll have to do a separate video on that. But what I want to emphasize is that not all people behind these companies have ill intentions. Many are really genuinely good people with families who have embarked on these ventures with an open heart, and I share the same vision as them. Like, we are not separate here. But many of them simply lack the necessary expertise and are really prioritizing the financial outcomes of a booming industry over understanding processes or delivering genuine quality product. 
And what I'm really trying to do here is to give you guys informed consent, some transparency, and also I'm hoping to help hold these brands accountable. Also extend compassion to them at the same time because I recognize the complexities of navigating a really new industry. And I do know that at the end of the day, we have the same mission. I've sampled several brands and there are very few that I would genuinely recommend because I'm passionate about health and quality is my top priority. So if you're interested, you can find my top 10 favorite brands list when you sign up for my email. And at this point you might be telling yourself why bother scrutinizing these brands so closely it's much better than alcohol anyway nobody's perfect and while i understand the 80 20 rule we need to consider the bigger picture of encountering natural flavors additives and other chemical ingredients on a daily basis across multiple product categories because these substances are pervasive and found in everything from ketchup to meat and per capita, daily consumption of artificial flavors has quadrupled in the last 50 years. So here's a quick study for you in case you need more information. I've also linked a few resources below. Basically, there's a study published which investigated the effects of long-term exposure to artificial flavors, specifically in food production workers. And the study found a statistically significant increase in the incidences of lung cancer among workers. We cannot simply overlook this, especially in the United States. I mean, one in two people are getting cancer now. We have some of the highest rates of cancer in the world. We made a list at number 10 globally in 2023. No product should be allowed to reach the shelves if its ingredients pose a threat to health, especially if it's been tested in clinical trials. That's literally insane. We can't do this anymore. Yes, not drinking alcohol is great for your health, but drinking a glass of artificial colors and flavors instead is not doing us any favors. How do we solve this problem? What do we do? Well, our first line of defense is education. If it has a lot of numbers listed on the back under the ingredients list, I probably would not drink it. And this is why I host my monthly virtual herbal mocktail class so I can educate you about the subtleties and teach you how to craft exceptionally clean mocktails that actually prioritize your health. But if you find a product you like but you're kind of on the fence about the ingredients then communicate with them. Email them. They're real people or maybe AI at this point but the ones that count will actually answer you and talk to you because we can't come from a place of attacking. We have to ask them and say hey look I'd love to see your next product without chemical X in it or or could you tell me a little bit more about the natural flavors that you have? Or I'd love to see this with all organic ingredients. And most importantly, we need to vote with our dollar. Don't buy the products with tons of chemicals in them if they aren't going to listen to your concerns. If you genuinely reach out to them and they're not changing or helping, stop buying from them. And if we collectively want to change an industry, we need to vote with our dollar. Because if we all stop buying this stuff tomorrow, we get their attention enough so that they have to make a change or it'll put them out of business. So I don't necessarily have all the answers here. I just truly want to bring people together on this. Feel free to make a suggestion in the comments. Also, let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about this. I'd love to do another video, maybe debunking functional mocktails next time from an herbalist perspective. And remember, the power really lies within each of us to make a difference, to demand better and to choose products that align with our values and support our health and well-being. But together, let's strive for a future where quality, transparency, and sustainability are not just buzzwords, but fundamental principles guiding every aspect of our lives.